Hello, 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 and welcome to Prog Review 579. And I'm talking about David Sylvian's album, Dead Bees on a Cake. And of course, this is the the expanded edition that they reissued for Record Store Day 2018, if you're watching this in the future. And I'm long dead, and civilization's crumbled, and you're watching this, and you're wondering, what what is this thing called music? That's the future for you. Uh, but yeah, we used to listen to the sounds, like rhythmic sounds. Oh, it's, it's hard to explain music unless you've heard it. You, you guys from the future, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. But this is a David Sylvian album. I've already done them in boxing, so there's no point in, in showing you it. Um, I, 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 rem I remember this. I remember, he said, I remember. Just... Uh, just pulling up the Wikipedia page, you see, so I can remember get the date because it was um, 1999. It was released back in the day, 1999. God, blimey! Again, this takes you back. Um, so yeah, next year we'll be celebrating its 20th anniversary. I should have released it next year, shouldn't they? In the future, that's irrelevant. So I don't know why I bother saying that. Um, but yeah, David Sylvia, for those of you who don't know, um, used to used to be the crooner with a, a band called Japan. Again, if you don't know them, they were uh, one of the electronic pioneers of the of the late seventies, um, early eighties. Uh, and he left, and he had a, a successful career outside of them. Worked with lots of different interesting people, and it culminates with this record. It's his fifth solo album. Again, released. Back in well, it depends when. Twenty uh, ninth of March, nineteen ninety nine. Good blimey! Um, back in the day, I I, like I, said, I bought the there were CD singles. We had things like that. We had singles back in the day. Now now they just release videos on YouTube. Um, but yeah, there were CD singles, and I remember buying them. Um, I surrender and Godman, I think, were released as singles off of this. Doesn't tell you that on the Wikipedia page. Huh? 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 Come here, I'll tell you. I'll give you the facts, and it was very exciting because it was a long time since he'd um, released a, a solo album like this. He'd done an album uh, in the early nineties, ninety, uh, whenever it was, ninety three, um, with Robert Fripp, Sylvian and Fripp, whatever you want to call them. Um, but yeah, it'd been a long time that he'd done a, a, an actual proper. Proper solo album, um, just well. Then he did Rain Tree Crow in '91, but that wasn't again. That was more re a, a, a revival of Japan. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'm just going back through his back catalogue uh, to see because there's lots of lots of things. Yeah, Secrets of the Beehive '87. So yeah, it would have been twelve years since so a proper proper solo, I know, I know he did other projects but I'm talking about an actual solo album because there'll be people in the comments will be there yeah, I've got to correct him, I've got to correct him uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it was an exciting it was a very exciting at the time, that oh, is a new David Seaman album, very exciting um, and then we got it and it was a very big, it was a very very, very big album very big album to process um and that's no, it's not a bad thing, not a bad thing because again, at the time, people like to fill the CD, and that's what we got here. Um, and again, because it'd been twelve years between records, I was I was a bit more forgiving of it, you know. Okay, it's a double album. That's what we're going to call it. Uh, on this edition, we got um, we got four extra bonus tracks, but I'd already heard them because they'd. Uh, They've been that's funny because it says was it Albuquerque was one of was a was a bonus tracks but I'm sure that was original on my original original release of that it was a long time ago uh, a couple of flowers yeah I'm sure they were on the original CD edition um, but it doesn't matter so it begins with the um, uh, the track I surrender which it, it goes on it's nine minutes long but it's uh, it, it is the template for the album. It's a very sumptuous, well-produced record. It's one of those ones that you know. I mean, it it, go, it 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 veers from these really big, 
songs like I Surrender and um, Cafe Europa, Scent of Magnolia, those kind of the really big like David Sylvia songs, some more experimental stuff like Dobro Number One um, and Albuquerque. And it's um, Sylvia just, just kind of building on what he did with his previous um, solo albums. However, here, there's a lot more development. You know, I think a lot more... I mean, while the Dobro stuff is kind of experimental, you, a lot of that, a lot of the stuff from, like, Gone to Earth, you know, where he allowed people to do what they please, that's kind of stripped back. It's more more structure. There's more, there's more structure here. Um... And it is a very, very rich meal. It's a very rich meal of songs. Um, the problem is, is some may find it a little bit boring, a little bit dull. That's the, that's that goes with the territory. Um, you do get a, an upbeat track in Godman, which again is a, there's a it goes ding 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 ding. ding. Oh, that's it. I've I've figured it out now. There's there's a lot there's a melody line that sounds like um the theme to um to Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, Axel F, and it by Harold Fortemeyer. Um I, all these years I've been searching for what that was and it, it's finally struck me whilst I'm doing this video. Um <laughs> Oh wow, it's funny how the mind works, isn't it? I was thinking, where did that 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 melody come from? And it sounds like a bit like it sounds a bit like that. Or is it? No, no, it isn't. No, no, I've got it wrong. It's this, this the, um, it's Paul Harcastle's theme song for Todd Pops. <laughs> I'm talking. About, should have. I should have. I should have planned this because now I'm just thinking in circles of where the ding 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 ding. ding. Um, again, sounds like Todd Pops theme. <laughs> But yeah, it is a very, very, very rich, rich album. And again, the original CD came with this very gold, lustrous album artwork, which quite illustrates what the music was like. Very, you know, like I say, very rich meal of, of, of music. Uh, and it's a shame, really, because, um, I mean, whilst there's enough material here for like two albums, um, what he's got, what he's done since then is you know i've not really liked you know from blemish to manafon those records you know they don't they don't appeal to me and that's a great shame because here you have a person that you you see him he's at the top of his game you know he's got you know these lovely big arrangements again a problem he needs a producer he needs somebody to to cut back these songs i mean i surrender like i say it's nearly 10 minutes long really really did we need it that long um and a lot of these songs like krishna blue is eight minutes long cafe europa six nearly seven minutes long you know a lot of these could be tidied up somewhat by a good producer and again that's just that's just one criticism of it, but you know, at the time, I forgave him. I said, "No, this is fine." <laughs> it's a David Sylvia album. We haven't had one for a long time. Um, so yeah, is it a good place to start? No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is a very good place to start if you're beginning your Sylvian journey. Um, I'd, I'd always go with Gone to Earth. I know it has a that um, experimental edge to it, but. You know, it's it's a really cool album, you know, because he veers from doing his fairly fairly straight ahead songs, you know, ballad kind of things, to to the more experimental. And I think Gone to Earth has a good mix of the has a good mix of the of both of those. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, if you've not heard this one, you should definitely definitely check it out. Though it won't be for everyone because it does go on a bit and it is a bit rich. And you've got to like you've got to like David Sylvian's voice. You've really got to like it. And I can understand why some people, you know, aren't into it. And it is this this album in places moves the same speed that glaciers move. It's like that. It's one of those records. Um, but you know, it's an interesting it's an interesting combination of 
experimental, straight ahead ballads, and there's, there's world music elements because he uses a track by G Digivan Gaspran, one of my favourite Duduk players who worked with Michael Brook. Um, and I think even Peter Gabriel used him on Passion. I might be wrong. Uh, probably am. <laughs> Always am. Um, so yeah, you've got all these different elements coming in to make it a very you know interesting album. And and this pressing is um, is very very nice. It's very good. If you can get one, you know, pick it up. Uh, in terms of rating, it scores. Oh, uh, see, I'm I'm you see, I'm kind of I'm kind of split because. Now it's in this double album format, I appreciate it more. But, you know, there's two albums here. You could make two albums out of it. So there's part of me wants to give it like three, three Wanderlusts out of five. But there's another one that wants to give me, give him like four Midnight Suns out of five. I'm kind of, I'm kind of divided. I'm divided. Um, God damn it. I'm going to give him four Midnight Suns out of five because I'm feeling generous and it's raining and... Uh, and this album's a, a nice album. It's a nice album. Uh, so there you go. My name's been Darren Lock. I've been talking about Dead Bees on a Cake by David Sylvian. Thank you for watching. There's only one more thing left to say, and you know what that is. That is, prog on.